10 new COVID-19 deaths confirmed in the Bahamas. A free national movement sitting MP speaks out. Police investigating another homicide and South and Central Eleuthera now have a new dock. Good evening, everyone. I'm Lissy Bastian with your JCN News for this Friday, July 16th. Thanks for staying with us. In our national COVID-19 news, 17 additional COVID-19 deaths confirmed in country over two days, according to the Ministry of Health's latest dashboard. This figure includes deaths that were previously reported under investigation. Health officials on Thursday, July 15th, confirmed that eight deaths were previously under investigation, have been reclassified. Seven of them are COVID-related and include four females and three males, all of Grand Bahama, who died between April and May this year. Their ages range from 44 to 103 years. Between Wednesday, July 14th and Thursday, July 15th, an additional 10 deaths were reported. These include eight residents of New Providence, five males and three females, a male of Bimini and a female of Eleuthera. These deaths all occurring in the month of July. These unfortunate deaths bring the country's total death count to 273. There are 22 deaths still under investigation. Meantime, health officials also confirming a total of 130 additional new infections between Wednesday and Thursday, 61 on Wednesday, 69 on Thursday. Between the two days, 109 cases were confirmed on New Providence, seven with a history of travel within 14 days, 15 cases on Grand Bahama and two cases each on Eleuthera, Abaco and Exuma. A further breakdown of the cases revealed that 63 are male and 67 are female. The country's national total of COVID cases now stands at 13,404. Of that number, 980 are active cases. Hospitalized cases stand at 67, 60 of them considered moderately ill and 7 in the intensive care unit. Just 31 cases recovered over the two days, bringing the total in that category to 12,066. A total of 113,323 tests have been completed to date. Well, Prime Minister Dr. Hubert Minnis addressing the recent uptick in COVID-19 related deaths this afternoon, expressing his deep concern for those families involved. He spoke to reporters on the sidelines of an official dock opening ceremony in Rock Sound, Eleuthera. Once anybody dies in the Bahamas from whatever cause, be it motor vehicle accident, um, some other accident, I'm very concerned because that's a, a family that's a family that would affect me. Um, as for what's happening with COVID, um, we're aggressively pursuing um, obtaining vaccines so that we can vaccinate our nation. But what we're finding um, worldwide, those individuals who are becoming ill are the non-vaccinated individuals. Those who are being hospitalized are the non-vaccinated. And those who are dying are not vaccinated. And therefore, um, we know that the solution moving forward is to vaccinate our population. The Prime Minister assures that the government is currently pursuing four fronts to obtain more vaccines to vaccinate the Bahamian populace, and he is certain that more people will come forward to receive the jab. Now, yesterday, the National COVID-19 Vaccine Consultative Committee said that administration of the COVID-19 vaccine will be limited to second doses by appointment only for those who are eligible. It said the measure will continue until additional doses of the vaccine arrive in country. The country is scheduled to receive another tranche of 33,600 doses of the Oxford AstraZeneca vaccine before the end of the month through the World Health Organization's COVAX facility. The Free National Movement ratifying the last of its candidates to contend in the upcoming general elections. Among those ratified on Thursday evening were Prime Minister Dr. Hubert Minnis for Killarney, Deputy Prime Minister and Minister of Public Works Desmond Bannister for Carmichael, Director of Labor John Pinder for Fox Hill, and Wellborn Boodle for Pine Ridge. The last of the four candidates come as speculation continues that there will be an early election. However, the Prime Minister has repeatedly gone on record to deny an early election. So far, both the Free National Movement and the Progressive Liberal Party have ratified 39 candidates for the 2020 general elections.
Well, with the last of its candidates ratified, Pine Ridge's current Member of Parliament, Frederick McElpine, this morning announced that he will be running independent. This off the heels of the Free National Movement ratifying Wellborn Poodle for that constituency last evening. Mr. McElpine says the FNM under the present leadership seem agitated and combative when challenged for accountability and transparency. Nominating another individual for Pine Ridge seat is not only seeking to force me out as a representative of the constituency, but also seeking to fulfill leadership objective to force me out of the party at this time. I am keenly aware that the rejection by leadership of the political organization is not a rejection from the people whom I love and have spoken up and out for. Now, he says this move, according to the party's constitution, nullifies his membership with the Free National Movement. Mr. McElpine adds that to this date, he has received no formal communication from the party's leadership. I have not gotten a letter, a phone call from no hierarchy member of the Free National Movement. Not even a courtesy call for all the rally stages I stood on for all the times I fought for the Free National Movement. The Chairman, the Secretary General, a, a, mer a member of the Meritaris Council, a, a stalwart, nobody, the leader, the deputy leader, none have reached out to me or given me a letter in writing. This is how you write a run a political organization in 20 Mama said you gotta be careful, you know. Today for me, Tomorrow for you. Now, there's recently been renewed speculation of an early election following the prime minister instructing candidates during a Tuesday night meeting to go out and campaign because the next general election is coming, according to a local daily. To that, Mr. McElpine says this. I think there might be an early election. It, it seems that way. But it also, again, if I was any political leader, both leader and opposition, I would tell them to take a look at that 52% undecided. That might also mean, to an early election might also mean that we may have a low turnout. Mm -hmm. And it could also mean we're trying to have a Donald Trump action. I just can't see where you have still dead people, people trying to clean up the register. If you're gonna go in three weeks or a month, it's gonna be hard pressed. Even for people who are running to work the register properly, it's gonna be hard pressed. But if that's what they want to do, because quite frankly, I think the minds are already made up. They done made up their mind what they can do. So they just waiting for us politicians to do what we have to do. During this virtual press conference, Mr. Michael Pine suggested that he's open to joining forces with another party eventually. But ultimately, he says he'll be influenced and persuaded by the people of Pine Ridge regarding his next move in that regard. You're watching JCN News. Stay with us.